You have probably heard of the term de-extinction before. But if not, let me explain it really quick. De-extinction, also known as resurrection biology or species revivalism, is the process of generating an organism that either resembles or is an extinct species. There are several ways to carry out the process of de-extinction. Cloning is the most widely proposed method, although genome editing and selective breeding have also been considered. Similar techniques have been applied to certain endangered species in hopes to boost their genetic diversity. Today, we are going to take a closer look at some animals that we are trying to bring back to life using these methods. The first animal on this list is the Pyrenean Ibex. The Pyrenean Ibex was a subspecies of Iberian Ibex that lived on the Iberian Peninsula. While it was abundant through medieval times, overhunting in the 19th and 20th centuries led to its demise. In 1999, only a single female named Celia was left alive in Ordesa National Park. Scientists captured her, took a tissue sample from her ear, collared her, then released her back into the wild where she lived until she was found dead in 2000, having been crushed by a fallen tree. In 2003, scientists used the tissue sample to attempt to clone Celia and resurrect the extinct subspecies. Despite having successfully transferred nuclei from her cells into domestic goat egg cells and impregnating 208 female goats, only one came to term. The baby Ibex that was born had a lung defect and lived for only seven minutes before suffocating from being incapable of breathing oxygen. Nevertheless, her birth was seen as a triumph and is considered the first de-extinction in late 2013. Scientists announced that they would again attempt to resurrect the Pyrenean Ibex. The next animal on this list is the aurochs. The aurochs was widespread across Eurasia, North Africa and the Indian subcontinent during the Pleistocene but only the European aurochs survived into historical times. This species is heavily featured in European cave paintings and was still widespread during the Roman era. Following the fall of the Roman Empire, overhunting of the aurochs by nobility caused its population to dwindle to a single population in the Jaktorow forest in Poland, where the last wild one died in 1627. However, because the aurochs is ancestral to most modern cattle breeds, it is possible for it to be brought back through selective or backbreeding. The first attempt at this was by Heinz and Lutz Heck using modern cattle breeds, which resulted in the creation of Heck cattle. This breed has been introduced to nature preserves across Europe. However, it differs strongly from the aurochs in physical characteristics and some modern attempts claim to try to create an animal that is nearly identical to the aurochs in morphology, behavior, and even genetics. There are several projects that aim to create a cattle breed similar to the aurochs through selectively breeding primitive cattle breeds over a course of 20 years to create a self-sufficient bovine grazer in herds of at least 150 animals in rewilded nature areas across Europe. For example, the Tauros program and the separate Taurus project. Let's continue with the quagga. The quagga is a subspecies of the plain zebra that was distinct in that it was striped on its face and upper torso, but its rear abdomen was a solid brown. It was native to South Africa but was wiped out in the wild due to overhunting for sport, and the last individual died in 1883 in the Amsterdam Zoo. However, since it is technically the same species as the surviving plain zebra, it has been argued that the quagga could be revived through artificial selection. The quagga project aims to breed a similar form of zebra by selective breeding of plain zebras. This process is also known as back breeding. As for the next animal, I'm pretty sure most of you will know it. When it comes to extinct animals or animals that we are trying to bring back from the dead, this animal cannot be missing from this list. Of course, I am talking about the Tasmanian tiger. The Thylacolio, commonly known as the Tasmanian tiger, was native to the Australian mainland Tasmania and New Guinea. It is believed to have become extinct in the 20th century. The Thylacolio had become extremely rare or extinct on the Australian mainland before British settlement of the continent. The last known Thylacoleo died at the Hobart Zoo on September 7, 1936. 
He is believed to have died as the result of neglect. Locked out of his sheltered sleeping quarters, he was exposed to a rare occurrence of extreme Tasmanian weather, extreme heat during the day and freezing temperatures at night. Official protection of the species by the Tasmanian government was introduced on July 10, 1936, roughly 59 days before the last known specimen died in captivity. In December 2017, it was announced in Nature Ecology and Evolution that the full nuclear genome of the Thylacoleo had been successfully sequenced, marking the completion of the critical first step toward de-extinction that began in 2008 with the extraction of the DNA samples from the preserved pouch specimen. The Thylacoleo genome was reconstructed by using the genome editing method. The Tasmanian devil was used as a reference for the assembly of the full nuclear genome. Andrew J. Pask from the University of Melbourne has stated that the next step toward de-extinction will be to create a functional genome, which will require extensive research and development, estimating that a full attempt to resurrect the species may be possible as early as 2027. The passenger pigeon is the next animal on this list. It numbered in the billions before being wiped out due to unsustainable commercial hunting and habitat loss during the early 20th century. The non-profit Revive and Restore obtained DNA from the passenger pigeon from museum specimens and skins. However, this DNA is degraded because it is so old. For this reason, simple cloning would not be an effective way to perform de-extinction for this species because parts of the genome would be missing. Instead, Revive and Restore focuses on identifying mutations in the DNA that would cause a phenotypic difference between the extinct passenger pigeon and its closest living relative, the band-tailed pigeon. In doing this, they can determine how to modify the DNA of the band-tailed pigeon to change the traits to mimic the traits of the passenger pigeon. In this sense, the de-extinct passenger pigeon would not be genetically identical to the extinct passenger pigeon but it would have the same traits. In 2015, the de-extinct passenger pigeon hybrid was forecast ready for captive breeding by 2024 and released into the wild by 2030. Now let's continue with the Maclears rat, also known as the Christmas Island rat. The Maclears rat was a large rat endemic to Christmas Island in the Indian Ocean. It is believed Maclears rat might have been responsible for keeping the population of Christmas Island red crab in check. It is thought that the accidental introduction of black rats by the Challenger expedition infected the Maclears rats with a disease, which resulted in the species' decline. The last recorded sighting was in 1903. In March 2022, researchers discovered the Maclears rat shared about 95% of its genes with the living brown rat. Thus, sparking hopes in bringing the species back to life. And these were just a few of probably hundreds of animals that will be brought back to life in the future. I'm really excited to see whether this will really happen and if so, which animals we will be able to welcome back in the future. Make sure to check out my other video right here where I talk with you about many other animals that were thought to be extinct for a long time, but were rediscovered and have found their way back to life and feel free to write in the comments down below which animal you would revive if you could. Thank you for watching, and I will see you there.